Hey guys, how's it going today? Thanks for tuning in. This video is gonna be about editing a landscape photos in Aurora HDR 2018. I'm gonna walk through my workflow. I'm gonna walk through sort of the steps that I take to create the image the way I envision creating it. And it's really easy. It, there's a lot of fabulous tools in Aurora. It just takes a little bit of time to walk through it. I'm gonna do it pretty quick so I don't keep you you know, glued to your uh, computer watching this video for too long, but hopefully it helps. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have this photo. This is a landscape I shot in British Columbia, Canada. It's basically water, river, kind of rushing through a gorge. There's mountains. I mean, it's just kind of a typical landscape. Um, I'm going to take that from uh, start to finish, and I'm going to use multiple layers. In all my tutorial videos, I've kind of walked through how to do specific things, but I've had a number of people ask me, what about workflow? Are you going to do workflow type videos? So yeah, I am, and, and here we go. Uh, this is kind of a typical landscape workflow for me, so let's get started. Uh, for me, it's about three things. It's about light, detail, and color, and that requires layers because you can't really you know, adjust colors and expect it to look good across the entire image. And so I'm often, the same with details, by the way, if you add a lot of detail to the rocks, which we're gonna do, it's gonna mess up the sky and the water. So I'm gonna show you some things that I do. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, the first thing I'm gonna do, and I gotta look at my notes so I can remember all the steps I took. Um, I bump up the contrast. I'm gonna bring up HDR Enhance a little bit. And then I like to use Smart Tone. I'm gonna go negative a little bit just because I want to bring down some of the tones. I don't want it to be too bright, so maybe maybe something like that. And then I'm going to go into top and bottom tuning. Again, I'm mostly working on the light right now, and that's it. So that's what this layer is about, just sort of balancing out the light. I'm going to change the exposure and the contrast. Let's see here. I'm going to go about 15, so something like that, and then bump up the contrast, uh, Some something like, let's say that. Let me see. Now... I think that looks pretty nice. Now, that's the beauty of top and bottom tuning. You can set the orientation so you can move the dividing line between top and bottom in the photo, move it up and down the photo. I don't really need to. The line uh, through the middle of the photo is pretty much where I want to make the, div uh, the dividing line anyway, so that's cool. Uh, the bottom, I'm going to bump that about 10, and I'm going to bump the contrast about 55, so something like that. So here we go, there's the before and the after. So I like the light where we are. I think it looks a little bit more, uh, you know, more, um, I don't know, more attractive, I guess. Um, I like the contrast that we added. I think that helps with the landscape. Generally an HDR file coming out of Aurora, is, although it's very natural looking, it's fairly flat. Uh, thanks to tone mapping and things like that, the, the images tend to be a little bit flat when you first start. And so adding contrast back is a great step to help make them a, look a bit more natural. Okay, so that's it for this layer. I'm going to add a new adjustment layer. And I'm not using any presets here. I'm just going uh, step by step through each layer. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do here is drop the exposure. And let's see, oops, uh, something about like that. And I'm going to bump up the structure. Here we go. And I'm gonna go structure about, let's say, 20, 21. Okay, now this is for the rocks primarily, maybe a little bit in the trees, but as you can see, I'm currently adjusting the entire photo, so I'm gonna open up the brush and paint, and I'm gonna say 100% opacity, and I'm gonna paint this adjustment across here. Now, I'm doing a rough job masking. I'm not trying to do a really fine job. This isn't, uh, you know, how to make a perfect mask. This is Jim kind of walking through this without taking all day. So, you can always check your mask with that button. You can see I missed some spots. I'm going to come back through just to sort of touch this up a little bit. But basically, I'm just adding some, some detail and structure into these rocks and a little bit of the, the tree line. And there we go. So, the before and the after. I don't know if you can tell that well um, on the video, but it looks better. So, um, let's go with that. Next, I'm going to add a new layer. And I'm gonna work on the sky and the water. So let's see, here's a trick. This is kind of fun. Um, a lot of way, uh, one way I should say to uh, sort of soften up water is to use denoise. And I do that all the time. Um, I use that in the skies a lot as well, but there's another way to do it and that is in the structure panel. And this is gonna be counterintuitive um, until I do it, but you don't think of structure um, using that tool to make water or skies softer. However, because if you go like this, it gets really crunchy really quick. I don't want that look. I want that look. So if you take structure negative 100, everything gets really soft and dreamy. 
And so I love that look uh, in the water and the sky. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna actually uh, change the softness as well, make it a little bit softer. And let's see, I'll leave boost about where it is. And then I'm gonna go mask this in. I'm gonna mask this into the sky and the water. And we're gonna have a smooth uh, sky and, and some smooth river going by. And I'm kind of going over these trees. I'm just kind of doing this quick, so I apologize. Um, in real life, I would go a little bit slower and be a bit more precise. But again, that would take a while, and I don't want to waste your time while you're just watching me move my mouse. That's not fun. So let me look at that mask real quick because I always miss stuff. So, you know, it's pretty good. I'm just kind of going over that rock, so we're just going to pretend that that didn't happen. Um, again, I'm not being precise here. I'm going to say done. I think that looks a whole lot better. Let me show you the before. So there you go. You can see a bit more detail in the clouds and especially the water. Some of that's just because the water was moving fast. I shot this handheld. I didn't have time to do a long exposure. I didn't have a, you know, a, like a 10 stop filter. That's something I would normally do, but this was a quick stop and I literally jumped out, um, fired, you know, a set of three brackets and, uh, and was done. So, excuse me, that's that. Let me show you the um, after again. There you go. The water's much smoother. I love that. That's a good little tip to keep in mind is using the negative structure to smooth things out. It works great, especially in water. Okay, another layer. I'm gonna go add some color work here. Um, I'm gonna get into Vibrance. I'm gonna bump that up about 30, yeah, about 32, and color contrast a little bit. I think that looks a bit more colorful, maybe a little too much. Um, and so I'm gonna take the saturation of the blue down a little bit, and I'm gonna go negative 30, let's say 32-ish. So there's that. Um, I like how the H, uh, excuse me, how the, the vibrance really bumps up the colors, uh, but I used HSL to tone down the blue a little bit because before, I think the sky was getting too blue. And I, I see that in a lot of HDRs. I've done it plenty of times. The blues in a blue sky can get really, really blue. Um, and I don't want to overdo it. So there, I think that's a little tamer. I like that. And um, I'm going to go and mask that into the sky. So let me do that. I'm just gonna paint this here. And again, going over the trees, going over all this real quickly. And I'm gonna say done. Okay, so we've got that layer. Now I'm gonna go uh, bump up the watercolor a little bit. So I'm gonna go back to HSL and I'm gonna move aqua and blue up a bit because that water, it's got a lot of minerals in it. Uh, it's, uh, it's essentially glacial runoff, at least I believe it is. But the rivers in this part of British Columbia, they run kind of this greenish blue color. It's really beautiful. Um, and it's fun to photograph because you have these great colors to work with. Uh, and you know, you already know I'm a fan of color. So I want to bring that color back, but I just want it in the water. So once again, I grab the brush and I'm coming over here and I'm just doing a quick mask just to show you. I'm just bringing some of that color back because it really is that color and I don't want to lose it. To me, that's part of the fun of the photo is that the water has such an amazing color quality to it. And there we go. So I'm going to say done. So again, the before and the after, you can see a little bit of color pop there, which I think helps. Uh, and now really that's uh, just about it. I'm just going to do a sort of a touch up layer. And I always do that at the end. Often I'll do denoise at the end. In this case, I'm not because I did the negative structure in the sky and the water, and I haven't added anything back since then that would impact the, the look of, of any detail in the sky or the water. I smoothed it out. The only thing I've done now uh, since then is just adjust the colors in the sky and the water. So I'm not gonna go back with any denoise. I don't need it. Everything's really smooth. Uh, but what I would like to do is do a little dodge and burn. So I'm gonna say start painting, and I'm gonna say, instead of 50, I'm gonna go with, uh, let's say like, you know, let's say 35, and I'm gonna say darken. And then I'm just gonna paint over some of these rocks and a little bit in those trees. I, again, it's just adding a little bit of contrast, and I think I'll make it, um, oh, I didn't get 35, did I? Did I mess up? So here we go. Um, I'm gonna do a little 35 here on that rock, and then I'm gonna go lighten a little bit, and I'm gonna go lighten this rock a little bit. I just wanna bring up some of that that's uh, right there because I just like the look. And so that's really about it. Just a little bit of touch up on Dodge and Burn. Let me show you the before and after. The before, that's the middle exposure from the bracket set. So 
that's what one of the exposures looked like and now we're there so you can see we brought back a lot of the color added back contrast applied detail in the places where i think it's helpful to have detail which is primarily the rocks and a little bit in the trees um, and then if you, if you notice what I did is when I added back the dodge and burn, I darkened the tree line a little bit. I don't want to make it too bright and I don't want to overdo the detail there. So it's got more detail, but then I darkened it so it kind of hides it. I want more of the detail to show up in these rocks. And that's really it, my friends. Let me show you one more time. The before, again, middle exposure from the bracket set and then the after. That's a final photo. So it's multiple layers, multiple filters. There's really nothing complicated about doing this. It's just thinking through what you want to do. And this really, I approach it with three things I want to do. I want to mess with the light or adjust the light to look more how I want it to look. I want to adjust the detail, but I want to do that selectively. Hence, I use layers. And I, I, I want to adjust color, which I also did selectively. And then my final touch-up step, the dodge and burn at the end, was actually coming back and using dodge and burn to sort of manage the light a little bit. And that's the beauty of that filter. You can just kick it into little spots wherever you need it and change you know, the intensity and it's, uh, it works great. So there's a final photo. Hopefully that didn't take too long for you. Go experiment with these techniques. Let me know if you have any questions. If you appreciate these videos and like them, give me a like. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe, share this with your friends, tell everyone you know about it. Hey, uh, I'm just kidding. You don't have to tell everyone you know, but you know, tell your photography friends to check it out and come back to my channel. More stuff coming soon. Thanks for watching my friends. I appreciate it. See you next time and adios.